Hi, this is David. In this video, we're going to discuss how to adjust the Norwalk cutter so that it slips easily on and off the motor shaft. Um, first, let's go through a brief history of Norwalk cutters. There are the early Norwalk cutters with a single set screw, and these are on the 235 to the 265. So the 235, the 240, the 250, and the 260. They all have one screw in the middle. Then there's a, some, and they're not very common, there are some Norwalks that only have one set screw, and you'll notice they move the set screw from the middle to the back, and they have one set screw at the back of the cutter. Then there's another group <clears throat> of Norwalks that have two set screws at the back of the cutter, and then there's yet one more Norwalk cutter where there are three set screws at the back of the cutter. And there's something I wanna show you about these set screws. They are not really intended to be adjusted and they are locked in place. And if you look very closely, there is a small dot and that dot is called staking. And what was done was a center punch was taken and it was hammered into the metal. And what that did was that it deformed the metal and it's squeezing the threads. So they, they have locked the set screw in place at a particular point. So they made a factory setting on it. Now we're gonna have to, <clears throat> I know some of you out there cannot get your cutter off and I'd like to show you how to adjust the factory set screw. And it should not involve having to re-stake the set screw. We, if we just turn it the tiniest little bit, we can turn it and the staking will still be in effect. So I would always say, if you have a cutter with one set screw, just adjust one. If you have one with three set screws, just try doing the middle one only. And I guess if possible, adjust only one set screw. The, the less you have to do, the better. Now, well, while we're here, let's talk about this set screw. This set screw has a, performs a different function. This set screw sets how far onto the shaft the cutter will go. And what, what Norwalk has done is they want about a fingernail's distance between the back of the cutter and the the feed tube escutcheon. And by turning this screw in and out, you can move the cutter out or in. So if your cutter is scuffing and hitting this, you can tighten this screw and it will push against the motor shaft and it'll move it out slightly. And you could take a piece of paper, fold a business card and use a business card as a gauge. Um, you can use any number of things. Now, back to the cutter adjustment. This cutter is behaving and it's coming on and off pretty simply. Now, if we assume that the Norwalk factory setting is correct, and typically they are, then there could be a couple of other things going on. And the other things that could be going on are that perhaps the motor shaft has gotten dirty, in which case you can take sandpaper, here I off camera hold on you can take some 400 grit sandpaper and lightly sand your feed tube and if there's any buildup of tannins etc on it then that may help the cutter slide on and off another thing that you could do is you could get a wire brush. This one is too big, but you could get something that would go in here. And then lastly, the other thing you could do is you could soak the cutter in pure bleach for about an hour and then rinse it thoroughly and any residue that's inside the feed tube will go away. You could also use hydrogen peroxide the same way. I would use a 29% hydrogen peroxide at full strength and be very careful not to burn yourself. Okay, 
let's get back to the cutter adjustment. So this one, as I've said, is good because it'll go on and off easily. Let me show you. So this is a 3 16th inch Allen wrench. And this is the size that is needed to adjust the screw. The amount that we're gonna turn this is like about that much. And now I'm not turning the screw, I'm just showing you. It, it's the most minute of adjustments. That's the difference between tight and loose. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tighten this just a tiny little bit. And it's not easy because of that staking. Okay, I, I felt it turn a little bit. And now I can feel that it's actually harder to get off. So I'm gonna turn it just a tiny little bit more. And what I want you to notice is you can't really even see me moving this screw. And now all of a sudden it's getting quite a bit tighter. So now let's go the other way. So my point in showing this to you is that the amount of adjustment required is minute. So let's go the other way. There we go. And it just loosened up. So really, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to turn these set screws a minuscule amount. Now that one, interestingly enough, the staking was not very tight. And so the cutter's getting progressively looser. So let's tighten this one back up. But once again, notice how little adjustment is done. Now, based on the fact that this cutter is turning pretty, pretty freely, the set screw, I'm gonna tighten it just a little bit more. See, that's where I want it. And what I would do is if I wanted to make this a permanent setting, is I would go back to the staking hole with my center punch and be careful. This will leave a mark in your cutting board or whatever it's against. I would have a block of wood underneath it I don't care about. And by doing that, I just restaked this. And now this screw should not turn freely. Yeah, you see, now it's locked. So that's how you restake a screw. So for those of you who need to adjust a Norwalk cutter set screw, this is how I recommend doing it. Thank you for watching.